Do you know who you are? That's the title of today's Daily Dose. Do you know who you are? Well, kind of wanting to hang out on this topic for a little bit today because the world we live in right now is wild and it's, it's dangerous and it's really good at swallowing people up. But God has us in this world right now, right here and right now. There's a purpose. There's a reason he's not taking us out of the world at this time. And, and Jesus spoke of that in John 17, 15. And so here we are. Here's the, here we are in this crazy, messed up, dangerous world. And so the question is, is will this world swallow you up and spit you out? Will this world pull you in? Or will you bring change to the world? Will you stand? Will you shine and be the influence? Well, back in the day when Jerusalem was conquered by the Babylonians, a guy named Daniel was thrust into a world that was bent on molding him into one of their own. But Daniel's story isn't one of being conformed to a godless culture. Rather, Daniel, he brought change to the culture. Daniel brought godly influence. And so, how was he able to do that? How, how was Daniel able to stand up and stand strong under that kind of cultural pressure? How was Daniel able to push back and bring God into the picture? Well, I believe it all started with Daniel understanding who he was. Daniel being rock solid in his identity. And we discover some of Daniel's identity in the third verse of Daniel chapter 1. When it says that then the king ordered Aspenaz, the chief of his court officials, to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility. Again, that's Daniel 1 verse 3. So we understand this about Daniel's identity. Daniel was from royalty. Daniel was also a member of God's chosen people, the Israelites. Daniel knew who he was. So do we? Because here's the deal. Like Daniel, we too, we got to understand that we're royalty and we're nobility. That's what Scripture says about those who are born again into God's family through His Son, Jesus. It says, but you are a chosen people. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a people belonging to God. Why? So that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. That's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. So, I want to ask you this. Do you live each day in that reality right there, in 1 Peter 2, 9 reality? Do you live every single day understanding that in Christ Jesus, that you're now a son, or you're a daughter of the King? Look, we got to understand something. We're not accidents. We're not orphans. We belong. We are actually members of the royal household of God. We're actually heirs and co-heirs with Jesus, as it says in Romans 8, 17. And that's amazing. See, God's promises, His kingdom, and His presence are our inheritance. We are more than conquerors. We have the victory. We're filled with the power of God. We can move mountains. <laughs> We are world changers, and if we really believe this about ourselves, then we can't be moved. We can't be manipulated. We can't be chewed up and spit out by this messed up culture. But the devil doesn't want us to understand this. He doesn't want us to understand who we are, because if we really believe we are who God says that we are, then we're going to kick the devil's butt. We're going to mess up all of his plans. See, we're going to spoil the plans of the, the enemy as we elevate Jesus. So the devil works overtime to rob us of what? Of our identity. He wants us to question our identity. He wants us to believe that we're someone we're not. Check this out. He wants us to believe that we're still sinners, still broken, still powerless, and still alone. But this isn't true of those who are made new in Christ Jesus. Scripture says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. 
The old is gone and the new is here, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, church, we have new identities. Our citizenship papers have been transferred. We're members of God's kingdom, His household. We're no longer sinners. Rather, we are now called saints. In fact, in fact, I believe this. I believe that continuing to call ourselves sinners is essentially to discount, to dumb down, or even just to completely ignore the grace of Jesus, His finished work on the cross. Because here's the deal. If you've been made new in Christ, then you need to stop calling yourself what you used to be before Jesus. You need to stop speaking of yourself as though nothing has happened. So here's what I want to make sure that we're grabbing hold of today. Our new identity. That we have been made new in Christ. I want us to be released in the freedom of this new identity. That, that, that I want us to embrace that we're members of God's household. And that we're not only going to survive in this jungle of this world that we live in, but we're going to thrive. Why? Because we won't be moved. Rather, we're going to be the ones doing the moving. Church, in Christ, we are positioned for influence. So if you feel bold right now, then I encourage you, just say this after me. Just say, I am all God says I am. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day living out your identity in Christ.